So we're still in section 5.2. Um, we're going to add a new definition and jump into an example. So mutually exclusive are two or more events are mutually exclusive if no two of them can occur simultaneously. Kind of a long word. Basically at the same time. So they're separate, they're mutually exclusive. We separate them visually. You see these Venn diagrams that have no overlap. So an example could be a cat and a dog, right? An animal is either a cat or a dog, it's not both. So that's mutually exclusive. It could be more than one event, right? So the one on the right is like five different events. They have absolutely no overlap. And because they have no overlap, the probability that they both happen is zero. So if you have two events that are mutually exclusive, the probability of the overlap, the probability that you have a cat and a dog is zero as a single animal, right? I can have a cat and a dog, but the probability that a single animal is both is zero. So when we make frequency tables, they're often mutually exclusive. So we have the number of absences for 63 statistics students in the first 22 days. So someone either missed zero or one days, not both, right? So one and two, someone's not included in both categories. These are all mutually exclusive. So everyone only fits in one category. So let's do some probabilities with this and we'll get more into mutually exclusive as well. Um, so I'm gonna make some combinations of events. So event A is that the student missed um, two or more days. So I'm gonna, in part A, I'm gonna list out what this means. So event A, I'm just gonna kind of put it in little braces. Two, uh, more than two days, sorry, not more, two or more. More than two would be three, three through seven. Um, I'm just doing these fancy braces, just to kind of put them together. Um, the next one, let's do the student miss between two and four days, and then inclusive means include the endpoints. So two, three, four. So we're just making kind of combinations of the events in the table. Um, the student missed no days, so C would be just zero days. And then the last one is at least five days, at least means that number or more. So five, six, or seven. I think students struggle the most with at least. So those are like my four events that I'm interested in. So mutually exclusive means which events have nothing in common. So we'll just kind of go through the list. Does A have anything in common with B? Yeah, right? A and B have three and four in common, so those are not mutually exclusive. How about A and C? So A and C have nothing in common, right? Three through seven and zero, those have nothing in common. So A and C are mutually exclusive. How about A and D? I'm just going through all the options, right? Those would be a no, because they have five, six, and seven in common. All right, now let's compare B with everything. So B didn't work with A. Um, how about B and C? Yeah, none of those numbers are in common. How about B and D? Yeah, they have nothing in common, right? Two, three, four, and then five, six, seven. And then we're almost done. How about C and D? Do they have anything in common? Nope. And then mutually exclusive could be more events. So are there any groups of three that work? So A doesn't really work in a group of three because it has stuff in common with a bunch. But how about B, C, and D? If I combined all of those, there's still nothing in common. So that's what mutually exclusive is. Nothing in common. All right, let's do a couple probabilities. So let's find the probability of A and B. So I'm just gonna copy this down. And I'm gonna paste it over here also, because we'll use it again. 
So A and B is again, and means overlap. So which numbers do they have in common? They have three and four in common. So it'd be the probability of three or four, three and four days. So how many total students were there? We might have to go back up. I think it was 63. That's my total. And then something that might be tempting is to do three plus four, right? Because three and four are numbers. But three and four are the days. So I'm gonna go up to the table and I'm gonna find the frequency for three and the frequency for, oops, the frequency for three and four, which is four and five. So make sure you're putting frequencies in the probability, not the days. So I know when we have data that's numbers, it can be a little tricky. So that's why I put days as I wrote this, as a reminder that those are days and not frequencies. So there's four students that had three days and there's five students that had four days. So it'll be nine out of 63, which is 0.1429. So let's try a couple more and then maybe we'll feel better about this. All right, let's do A or B. So A or B just means any of these. So A would be three, four, five, six, seven. And then B, we already included three and four, we just add two. So again, these are days, not frequencies. So writing the word days will remind me that these are not the frequencies, these are the days missed. So there's 63 total students, and I'm just going to find the frequencies for all of these days. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, and 2. So we'll add up all those frequencies. So 10, 4, 5, 3, 3, 1. 10, 4, 5, 3, 3, 1. Frequencies. So it's not days, right? It's frequencies when we do probability. So 26, double check that. We'll divide by 63 and we get a point four one two seven. So 41% chance, but 4127. All right, let's finish this up. Um, so A, B, or D. So A, let's just paste that. We'll bring D down as well. D was five, six, seven. And this is an or, so this is any option, right, or. So I'm going to take all of A. Um, we're going to take B that hasn't been counted, so 3 and 4 were counted. And then we're going to add what's new in D. Um, but it looks like 5, 6, and 7 were all already counted. So this is actually the exact same as part D. Nothing new was added. So this is still 26 out of 63. 4.4127. And that's because D added nothing new. All right, we'll do one more of these, B, C, or D, um, which actually will lead to a nice property in a second because they were mutually exclusive. Um, but let's go back up. So B was two, three, or four days, that's B, C was zero days, which hasn't been included, so we'll add zero, and then D was five, six, or seven, which also hasn't been included. So there was no overlap here, these are mutually exclusive. And then again, I'm going to add the word days, just as a reminder that these are days and not frequencies. There's 63 total students, and we'll just add the frequencies. So the frequency for 2, 3, and 4 is 10, 4, and 5. The 
frequency for zero is 22. And then go ahead and look up for five, six, and seven, the frequencies, right? So three, three, and one. And you'll notice I'm just kind of adding the three cases because I'm not worried about overlap, um, like the previous examples. So I'm just adding everything in B, everything in C, and everything in D because there's no overlap to worry about. And we get 48 out of 63, which is 7619. And that leads to a nice definition before we end this video. So if we have mutually exclusive events, then when we're doing the or case, we can just add them, P of A plus P of B. So here's my A, here's my B, and then if we have more, then we can just keep adding. So that would be my C. And that's again, because there is no overlap to worry about. If there is an overlap, this doesn't work. So we'll deal with the overlap in a few examples. So for the ors, we can just add if they have no overlap. That's what this definition tells me. All right, let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, I'll see you back for the next video.